you passed your luck check it's the no class live show with your host eddie and matt hey matt how are you doing strange and getting stranger well luckily we are still in the season of yellow pollen hooray so we're enjoying that right now yeah we're bathing in the trees material you know inhaling it even pg oh sorry sorry pollen pollen yeah all right so you have anything you would like to discuss right off the the top here any topics that have been just boiling up in your brain that you're just dying to talk about well it's it's really you know it's kind of a misnomer calling it spring con it's really more of a games day that's grown to be two days but I'm excited about the 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 long con spring con coming up here at the end of the month. Uh, we've got some we got some MCC DCC being represented, of course, or or it wouldn't have the long con name on it. But uh, anyway, I'm excited about that. This will be I don't know more interesting when we get to our uh, podcast portion of the show. But our podcast that we will be talking about this. This week, episode six, so we talked about podcast six a little bit, but that podcast, oh, so many years ago, we were talking about the Long Con Spring Roll and how much you enjoyed that name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have been away for a bit and we've pretty much, much missed all of the D&D controversy. All that has kind of brewed up and settled down while we've been gone. Mm -hmm. We didn't get even get a chance to get kicked off the network for talking about it or anything. Yeah. Apparently they had some sort of a big powwow. What was it yesterday or recently? And they had. And it was it was hot. It was spicy from what I understand. It was pretty hot. It was the uh, D&D Creators Conference. Mm -hmm. So did you hear what the big news out of that was? I guess that, maybe the biggest news that that basically for now there's not really going to be a D and D six. It's just going to stay five point five or something. You know. Yeah, D and D one is D and D done. Good that deal. name is even going away. Wow. It was so a poopy like, name. That was never the name. It's a poopy name. It was never the name. We always just misunderstood that. Yeah. Hmm. How's the coffee? Oh, fantastic. So Lou was asking about uh, Caverns of the Dead God. And I've been talking with some artists. I've been doing some uh, editing work. I just really need to get it formatted. And I've never formatted some before. So we, I'm looking forward to figuring out formatting. I, From what I hear from Eddie, it sucks a lot. So. Yeah, I think um, the guys right in front of us on Raw have said they have a lot of fun doing that. So, I mean, some people love it, some people hate it, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'd much rather do the creative part than the formatting part. Well, I'll have to reach out to them because they're both good guys. We know them, you know, maybe they can give me some tips and pointers. Anyway. All right. Speaking of our good buddy, Lou. Yep. Do you have some Kickstarters you'd like to give a shout out to? Well, uh, I, I, Lou's like perpetually kicking, isn't he? So I, I'm not, uh, Blue. what's your current venture? I know I just got the the one thing in with all the, the MCC monsters in it. And by the way, mwah, mwah, wonderful work. I love it, dude. You did a, you knocked that out of the park. His new thing is Manicious Midway, a collection of full-length Dare Luck Club adventures that take place in and around the fictional Jolly World theme park. Ah, yeah. I, was gonna say, I don't think anybody can keep up with Levi talking about perpetual Kickstarters. But again, a lot of good stuff elite from Levi. You know, Levi comes, of course. And then uh, our good buddy, friend of the Red River Con, mm -hmm. James Shields, has his Mace Monsters and Encounters book out right now. Yeah, I've I've been promoting that on my uh, Facebook page. It's the it, uh, Jay is. A great artist. We've had I've had the opportunity to sit and talk with him at North Texas, you know, uh, having a little tipple, and uh, uh, he's just a super great guy. Um, and I'm really excited for him with his mace. Yeah, check out that mace. 
for those few of you out there that would remember when we did Red River RPG Con, he did our redesigned logo for the second year, which was very cool. Oh yeah, Eddie loved that logo. Yeah, it was almost worth do it keep keeping that con going with just the fifty of us that showed up. <laughs> but they were an awesome fifty. They were the best. Absolutely. All right. So uh, you, you were talking about, so it's ironic that you're saying we were, our six podcasts, we were talking about a spring con then, and here we are talking about a spring con again. Yeah, after you said never again. Yeah. yeah. But again, this is not really a con so much as it is a game day that we decided to bring back that wonderful name for. Yeah, yeah. Because it's cool. I, I get to break out my long con spring logo shirt. You know, the OG is like on Eddie's hat there, the that that's the OG right there, but we have one in green for spring, so that's kind of cool. I had a shirt made just as spring con died. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to break that out for that. Yeah, that shirt hasn't got a lot of use yet. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm gonna take you back to the fifth edition controversy that we missed out on. Oh yeah, yeah. So since we didn't get to talk about it at all. There's been a lot of, like, it's now under Creative Commons, so the world is good and safe again. But what it, what is your uh, PG available for pot, for broadcast on the Goodman Games Network opinion on 5e right now? What do you think? Where where do you, where does 5e and Watsi and all that stand for you? Are you asking our wonderful viewers or me? <laughs> you. Oh well, we you can know. chime in in a minute. Yeah, um, fifth edition is an adequate game. Um, some people have tried to accuse me of not liking the game, and it's not that it's a bad game. It's just between some of the some of Watsi's behavior, and then now with Hasbro, uh, I just don't want to promote them as a company, um, you know, or their product. And honestly, from what I've heard from some of the faithful in the last year or so, their product line is really. <sighs> not performed well and, and hasn't really resonated with a lot of the diehards or whatever. Well, it's um, out there on the internet that it's been lacking quality. Yeah. And that could be for any number of reasons. Um, and I'm not going to speculate on them, but I'm not entirely surprised, but I've been out of the loop because I really haven't been uh, playing or running any fifth edition, you know, for probably a year or more. I'm pretty much, you know, running a, uh, uh, DCC and its derivatives. You know, I love Umerica. And I've been doing a little bit of Savage Worlds um, just because a buddy of mine is crazy about it and he's twisting my arm pretty hard. But uh, that's uh, double R. But yeah. This is things that link so Yeah. But that's cool. Um, Do you play fifth edition anymore? You know, I don't. So there you go. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. But that's just like you said, you're not against it, but you don't play it anymore. No, no. But I will still play it. I will still run it because I think that's how we're going to get more new players into the system. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be there to greet them and go, by the way, the DCC games are over here. Yeah. Kind of set the hook, you know. Yep. Yeah. And and it's it is, free. And then it really is a shame that that there's a lot of people that uh, we've had people come over and sit down to play and they're like, Oh wait, well, this isn't D and D. We're like, well, there's goblins and there's dragons and there's swords and there's magic missiles. You got all the same stuff here. Just the mechanics are different. Oh, I, Oh my, my head will explode. I'll go, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I, so anyway. Yeah. So with that said, we've also launched our series of YouTube videos where we talk about if you're transitioning from 5th edition over to DNC, DCC and what some of the differences are, what some of the alikes are. So that video has really done for our small numbers. That's been a really popular video. Yeah. We've got a lot of love out of it. Would y'all like to see us do something a little more uh, detailed? Well, I think what we'll do for the next one is I've seen this a lot around is people want to know where to start in DCC and where to go to next. 
because I think that's something that really hasn't been codified, which is one of the great things about DCC for us old timers. You can pick up anything and take it, to, work it into anywhere. You know, this module now connects to this module because I said so. Yeah. You know, or I've made some little bit in between that will connect these two things. There's a interlude. Mm. So that's one of the things that seems like there, if there was more clarification, because I think that's where new people can get lost at pretty easily yeah. is kind of how to do a campaign, because that's always the thing with DCC too, is you can't do a campaign in DCC. And you absolutely, I've done it. So, I mean, you can, you can do it. Um, but well, I will say, I, I, I wish I could provide those links or direct you to them, but I know I was looking at this when I was running DCC at our local game club uh, some months back, there were these adventure paths that somebody out there, because there's so many people, God bless, there's so many great people that love DCC and, and Goodman Games that even folks that don't work for the company that'll step up and do these sort of things. It was either one of them or actual company folk, but they had put out a number of different adventure paths. Like they showed certain adventures that link well together and went, mm -hmm. you know, sequentially. So it, I, I can't tell you, that might have been under the Legacy League or something stuff maybe, or there was links there. But there's definitely some things out there that show different adventure paths using the DC, which, you know, those modules are just phenomenal, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know um, Harley Stroh and Brendan LaSalle have their adventure paths now. They put out videos on that. Yeah. Like, start with my zero here and then go to my first level adventure here and so forth and so on. And yeah. I want to say maybe Brendan needs to write some three and fours to fill in because that's one of the things that you don't expect is somebody to try and play through your series necessarily in DCC. You think, I yeah, just fill in from anywhere which is what most people do. And it works fantastically. I'm just saying for the brand new player that kind of needs a, a little bit more, like follow these flashing lights. Yeah. I, I, the right way. What I would love to see is, and it's one of those things that we've talked about. The great things about DCC is you can do it very sandboxy or just make it your own world and, and plug in those great DCC adventures. But years ago for, I think it was 3.5 or, you know, D and D they did, their Aerith box set, you know, it's their world. And I wish they would reintroduce that because, and then even maybe say where these different adventures potentially take place or something, that would be really cool. And that would help with, you know, getting new people in like at, at my, at the game club, the group I had, we kind of did a whole cloth uh, improv made up on the spot kind of world. And we just kind of moved around, but it, I would love, I've, I've had the opportunity to look at the PDFs, of that Aerith box set. And I think it'd be really neat if there was something like that out there. And, you know, for people that want that sort of pre-generated world, they did all the work on it and it looks pretty good. So, I, you know, it'd be neat if they could get it out there. Yeah, and That's one of the things that we brought up too was that you can take any setting that is out there. It would be nice if there was an official DCC one, but you can take pretty much any of them. Like you could take the old, uh, Forgotten Realms and port something in if you wanted to. Now, there's a lot to be said for being able to homebrew your own thing. And one of the advice, some advice that I'd give somebody doing that for the first time is you only have to create as much as you need. You don't have to make the whole world if you're just going to go around this city and this dungeon to start with. That's what you need to flesh out. The whole thing doesn't need to be there. That can get created as you go. So what about you? What is some of your world building advice? Well, yeah, I mean, there's so many resources out there. Just do a search on drive through RPG or just in, just a Google search or whatever, and you'll find there's a lot of free resources or fairly inexpensive resources to, to create your own game world. Um, and uh, But if anything, like we said, these adventures are so great, you could loosely tie them together. You know, at one point, Eddie did a great sandbox where he took a lot of classic adventures and he just sort of sprinkled them in you know and and because so that way he didn't have to do as much heavy lifting you know that you've got these adventures but uh um still there was the subplots and the intrigues going on in the local town that was the hub of the adventure the fallback point you know the old classic D, &D you go out to the dungeon you know you get injured you come back heal up spend some money in the town you go back again so i mean honestly you could just do something loose sandboxy just something that barely you know uh, ties these different adventures together 
but let players have different threads to pull, you know, maybe. So if you've got three first edition adventures prepped and then drop those threads and hints and clues in the town, and then just they get to pull one. So they still get that opportunity of they're not railroaded per se, you know. The further along that I've got in my RPG career, though, the less of a dirty word uh, railroading has become. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because there is a certain amount of railroading that seems to be required. If you just leave it as an open sandbox, you may not get anywhere. And I, I got to tell that story. When Eddie was running his sandbox with these one guys, they mm-hmm. like hacked their way through the jungle and fought through the random encounters and they got to the precipice of the dungeon. And Eddie's like, and Eddie goes, all right, cliffhanger, let's call it, call it for the night. So when they come back two weeks later, whatever play, he had furiously worked that adventure up that converted over this old school module. And then the next time when they start up right away, they go, Hey guys, let's turn around and go back to town. <laughs> but that was some analysis paralysis. <laughs> but before we get too far away from it, let me go yeah, to yeah. Uh, Lou with a question. Sure. You guys reach out all the time to uh, newbies. It seems, do you see much of a difference in the learning curve between DCC and five E? And let me put this part in first is I think when it comes to reaching out to noobs, we've seen historically more people with a that are starting 5e or with a 5e background. So to get somebody that's like, I've never played an RPG and I'm going to start with DCC is pretty rare, don't you think? As opposed to like, well, I've had at least one session of 5th edition and I'll check out this DCC thing you're running. But what do you think? Chime in on that. What's given me a lot of really good insight lately on uh, n- new gamers is my new uh, friend. She has never gamed before. And so just in the last few months, we've been dating, Heather. Uh, we've, uh, we, you know, she's she's been introduced to gaming and she's loving it. She's really enjoying it. And she's an opportunity to play 5th edition. She's had an opportunity to play Savage Worlds. She's played DCC. Uh, we were able to play test Edgar that was just on uh, uh, this adventure that he had in play testing. I think it just got, it came out recently, but we had the opportunity to play test that. And uh, Heather had a lot of fun with it. And tonight she said, I think I might like this the best. So I will, I'm not just saying that. I mean, out of the three systems as a new player, she really connected. She thought the most and really enjoyed DCC. She, she had to quickly get her a set of the funky dice, you know? So what well, that's worth. I think maybe another difference in the learning curve is there's a lot less to learn in DCC. Whereas with 5e, you're like, okay, you have this feat that does this. And you've got a power that you can activate on this. So when you get into the bells and whistles and stats, it's going to be a lot easier to run a third level DCC character than it is a third level 5e character. And I've heard people complain about that on different forums, talking about different games, that some of these games have so much stuff front loaded, it's kind of overwhelming for some players. And so it's nice when you kind of layer the stuff in or you don't have as many bells and whistles. Um, Fifth edition is a game that's more stat weighted. And so in their soft sense, people come from fifth edition to DCC or other OSR games. And they're like, oh, crap, my stats are crap. And I go, no, your stats are phenomenal. You got a 16, a couple of 14s, you got like a 12. And they're like, eh, you know, I'm like, no, you don't understand that. That's phenomenal, you know, and it's you don't need to get so tied up in the stats, you know. Um, and you can only have so many magic items, you know, in fifth edition. You can have as many as the GM you know, is depending on if you're playing with Monty Hall or, you know, which I'm kind of dating myself again there. <laughs> but, you know, that style of game mass, you can have as many or few uh, you know, magic items as you want. You can layer that stuff in, and there's the abilities you gain as you level, you know. Yep. Uh, Griffin says, DCC gives players a lot more agency in some ways since we just have the base occupational skills. PCs need to flex their brains as players to make the most of it. That is very freeing for players, which I will agree with you. And then that definitely goes into what kind of player you are, because Mm -hmm. we were talking about this one the other day on our uh, video. We were like, should we put this in or should we not? Was talking about background occupations. Mm -hmm. If you're a creative player and you say, uh, 
I used to be a fisherman before this, and I find this old loose netting. Can I use it to try and capture this monster or what have you? Yeah, great. That's some rewarding backstory that you've worked in there. But will a lot of newer players maybe think about that sort of thing? Thinking outside the box. They're, they're actually busy looking at their character sheet for, do I have a power that lets me use nets or whatever? And they're not just ask the GM, hey, can I use this net? And you'll say, yeah, you're net, you know, and make a luck test, you know. That's one of the things I've talked about before, you know, podcasts, other places that's great about DCC starting with the funnel is with the funnel and you being a zero level character, you're a rutabaga farmer, you're, you know, uh, a, a gong farmer, whatever. And so the thing is, you have no bells or whistles. So it literally comes down to your creativity. So that's where that really shrewd player, that smart creative player really shines in the funnel because they can go, well, hey, can I do this? Yeah, give me a luck test, you know, or roll under your strength, you know, you know, whatever, you know, you just add, adjudicate on the spot. I love that because the creativity of the players and the judge working together, man, that's that's when the magic happens. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that I really like the low-end stuff, too, because that's more where you have to rely on your creativity creativity than, oh, I've got this situational thing that will get me out of the problem. Mm -hmm. I will resolve it all with this one spell or this one ability, or all I have is a hammer, so everything is a nail. Absolutely. Okay, here's another one from Lou. Do we have any modules that we like to string together? traditionally like what's your go-to funnel well you know for me i love brendan lasalle's uh hole in the sky um don't get me wrong like everybody almost always points sailors. to um sailors yeah sailors i mean everybody you know sailors 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 is phenomenal but i really like hole in the sky it's it hits all the beats and uh, but I tell you, in recent time, I've fallen in love with uh, oh, the, the Death Slaves of Eternity. I ran that you on that one night with Bradley. And man, yeah. wasn't that a, wasn't that great? That was a I, great one. That one's phenomenal. Um, so really, I love those two. And then, Eddie, what, what's your favorite first level adventure? First level? Yeah. Or zero? No, first level for you. I'm, I'm, I know I'm kind of skipping, but. Oh, um. You're going to say tower, aren't you? Tower of the back. But I assume that that's your jam, bro. You know, you, you yeah. run that really well. But now what's your favorite zero? Probably shambling undead. Yeah, I was waiting for that. There you go. But those are the ones. It's kind of like if I run something, that's what I'm going to run. But when Eddie was road crewing really hard, uh, he he ran. God, how many times did you run shambling undead? Yeah, that's one of those ones like how many times how many times have I ran Village Hamlet? Yeah. Like, like I could probably run a uh, hole in the sky without having the module in front of me. You know, I mean that's yeah. So anyway. But I will say for my zero, um, I think Harley Stroh recommended this and I could uh dig it, is go from sailors. Well, actually, no, he I think he had a different one, and I said you could go from sailors into the black tower because in sailors you're getting pushed out in those long boats, remember? Mm -hmm. So it could be easy enough for you to beach up somewhere and say, hey, yeah. Yeah. go get this artifact. So there are so many ways you could tie it in, but it would be nice if there was a more obvious way for new players as they're getting their footing in the DCC world. Yeah. I see someone asked about the Purple Planet series. I've, I've, that's, I own so much awesome DCC paraphernalia, but I think that unless they reissued it, it's kind of hard to get your hands on it. I think that had come out right before me, my time coming into DCC. Anyway, it, that's never passed through my hands, uh, but I would love to because I love uh, the Martian, uh, you know, John Carter and all that. And I understand that Purple Planet is kind of, wink, wink, you know, the uh, uh, unofficial DCC uh, uh, John Carter. I, and I love those books. I love that whole genre you know uh i would love to you know. and i guess everybody's getting their dying earth sets in right now too that's what yeah. i keep saying post yeah. the dying earth did you have any interest in that 
Um, you know, ironically enough, and it's crazy, I, I have some of those books and I'll tell myself I haven't read them. I need to read them. I literally got them kind of in preparation was years and years ago when they were alluding to the fact that they had gotten the rights to do, you know, the dying or stuff. I thought, well, I should get it. I should read it. I just haven't, I haven't made, I need to, I need to read them, but I haven't read the books. And so actually, uh, I don't, I don't have my Kickstarter. Oh, did you kickstart it? Um, yeah. Put you out there? Oh yeah, absolutely. Did you get the super deluxe edition? Nah. Okay. Cause I've seen a lot of people about that too. Like, I wish I had bumped it up to the super deluxe. It looks like Matt is heading to the theater to watch the D and D movie. So do you want to mention that? Cause I think if you, if you have a problem with Watsy and you really want to send him a message, wait one day until you watch it. That was the, the big humorous thing that came up for us. Yeah. Wait one day. Wait one day. That'll send the message. Yeah. 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 Well, do you want me to start it? I'm not going to go see it. Well, yeah, I'm not either, but I will say when it comes out on stream on the streaming services, I'll probably watch it, but I don't know. We'll see. The, uh, I guess the returns on it, everybody has said that it's a pretty good movie, but I guess the actual returns on it so far were kind of meh. It wasn't a hit. It wasn't a bomb. It's just kind of hanging out there and see what the second and third weekends do and mm -hmm. how much money they make off of it. Yeah. I see uh, someone's talking about starting their Weird Frontiers campaign tonight. Hey, man. Yeah, get hype. That's David Beatty that we had to wait for the finished product, but man, worth the wait. That is so good. Solid country gold. Yeah, We're talking weird about uh, going back to podcast number six. Yeah. All those years ago, so that had to be like, geez, when did we start that? 19, 18, 18, 19, something like that. For, and that we were just talking about uh, Dark Trails Kickstarter has just wrapped up, and boy, are we excited for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one, Weird Frontiers, is another example of me where I'm like, I like it at the lower levels. I like yeah. it when you have to think about it and mm. you don't have all the bells and whistles, but it's still a great game. And, Oh, Beatty's an all right guy. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, there's a movie called Bone Tomahawk. Uh, that's kind of a weird West that came out a few years back and it's got the awesome Kurt Russell uh, and a number of other very talented actors in that. That was one of those kind of B movies, like straight to red box kind of thing. But yeah, uh, for Ghost Squid, check out uh, Bone Tomahawk. You can find it on a lot of the streamers. Yeah, that's just off the top of my head. If I was more prepared, there was a classic Twilight Zone episode that I talked to Beatty about. And I was like, did you ever see that? Because it's pretty much uh, classic Twilight Zone. It's in the uh, Civil War. And I think it's the South finds a scroll or something where they can make a pact with the devil to win the war. And spoiler alert, it's like, even we're not that evil. We'll just... <laughs> We'll just lose, okay? <laughs> we understand it. They make that call. and yeah. But I was like, if you think about what the repercussions of that could have been, boom, Weird Frontiers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Someone's, what's a red box? Yeah. Uh, call shot, shot, Matt. <laughs> I love, yeah, also, what was it? A lucid, take a Jared doll shot. I used to say, yeah. Can, I was going to say, can I say enema? <laughs> Not on this show. Not on this show. Okay. Okay. But we can actually show one if you want to do it. <laughs> Live on the air. <laughs> That's when you fail your luck check. That's all of a sudden uh, comes a little screen. Dun, 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 dun. What is, um, uh, sorry for the, you know, the show. What do you call it? Uh, anyway, yeah. Well, talking about movie inspirations, I was watching Ghost of Mars. Oh. So that was John Carpenter's last movie. And there's a reason for that. Because yeah. as much as we love John Carpenter, it's a horrible, horrible movie. So the, the premise is, and I was like, this will give me some great MCC type of ideas with this kind of post apoc type Mars that's going on. So I guess you could have Purple Planet in there too. But they're mining and they unleash these spirits, the ghosts of Mars, which are possessing people. And when they possess people, 
they start going from like your cyberpunk miners to road warriors. They like file down their teeth and paint up their faces and everything, but they sound like Rick and Morty characters, like when they're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what? that's not scary. How is, yeah, how is this supposed to be intimidating for these mutant humans coming down to destroy them? So it's just, oh man, it is an awful movie. It was supposed to be. Uh, part of the Escape from L.A., Escape from New York series. But Escape from L.A. apparently did so bad that they're like, nope, there's no Escape from Mars now. But he dresses Ice Cube up to look like Snake. He's even wearing that tight little T-shirt thing that Snake Plissken wears. So that you know. But he's Desolation Jones. Ice Plissken. Right there, that quality knockoff name. I should tell you how good that movie is. Some of the worst acting you'll ever see, too. So I can highly recommend that you do not watch Ghost of Mars. It's not even so good it's bad, like some of the ones that you've been watching. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been looking at some... some. Uh, I haven't watched any of the old Bad B stuff for a while, but I've been I've had the itch. So I've been compiling a list in my phone of the really bad uh, 80s, early 90s sci-fi fantasy movies to watch or re-watch. Oh, yeah, free on Roku, see? Yeah, cool. Good deal. Oh, uh, we have not talked about our trip to Humble, Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Had, at Etten Games, they had a D&D free, as in free of D&D, RPG weekend. No D&D allowed, other games only. And they didn't even allow Pathfinder because they wanted to go more into the smaller stuff. Yeah. And it was cool to see more of the OS. It was it wasn't just OSR, but that was really what would seem to be most popular was the OSR stuff, you know. Yeah. We played some good Castles and Crusades. Mm hmm. One pretty good game and one meh game. <laughs> we had offered. If Milton's to, listening, you were the meh game. We had offered to run MCC DCC. I was going to run some America, you know. Uh, but um, in the end, the, the owner is a good friend of ours said, man, why don't you guys some, you know, come game, come have some fun. So we, we just played games and had a good time. Yeah. Matt, you were going to run, were you going to run MCC and Umerica? I was going to run Umerica. That's, you know, yeah. And I was going to run some barbarians of the ruined earth and some horde crawl classics. And speaking wow. of that, we got to meet up with our buddy, John Watson, who was on the show. Geez, was that the last episode or next to last episode? And so Horde Crawl is moving forward, enjoying it, greatly enjoyed. I've, I've been able to help play test some rounds of it and give a little feedback. And I'm really excited. You guys should be getting really excited. It's going to be cool. Oh, uh, Grape Ape is calling you out. He says, what you're telling me is I need to remove the game from your road crew credits. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, it's funny. I hadn't put in for swag in so long. I've got so much swag in my box, but my box is starting to get a little bare. I might have to start putting in for swag again. Yeah, I think seven, eight, and nine swag has hit. Oh, and it's sexy. Yeah. And I'm already done for the year yeah. as far as like planned out games like this con and that con and this home game and that home game. Well, not home game, but publicly available games of course yeah. because it's a lot of the horde crawl play testing stuff yeah um i always do a tournament game at north texas where i usually test it and i run it again at long con in november and uh man last year we had a blast uh at my tournament game but it kind of it, it kind of missed a few beats at uh long con i think it was too loud and it just, yeah, it didn't work out that well, but I'm really excited about my tournament, my DCC tournament game. I'm going to have it North Texas this year. Already half the tables, the seats have sold, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. I'm only running Horde Crawl, but all my seats have sold out too, so that's really cool. That's always a good thing. Yeah. It gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. Right on. But yeah, I, I'm going to have a bunch of cool terrain and just, it's usually people standing in chairs 
hollering and raucous and just crazy. And I, I have a lot of fun with the tournament games. So speaking of removing things from your road crew credits, mm -hmm. I know I've said this one a million times before, but the old Dave Chappelle line, like the stuntman gets paid for the attempt. If you try and make the jump and it doesn't work out, you still got to get paid. If I try to run a game and there's nobody there, that still counts. If a tree falls in the wood, tree still fell. Fool me once, shame on you. Won't get fooled again. Well, you know, one thing that's great is when we I've wanted to feel bad and other people complain about, oh, I went to run a game and no one showed up. Even the, the great ones like Brendan LaSalle, he's, he confided in us one time. He showed up at a place and no one showed up, you know, and he just hung out and chilled or whatever, you know. Yeah, Ghosty Squid says, just bring a book to read, right? And that's yeah. the good thing about us is that right. a lot of times – we would go run these games together. It's like, if we have enough people, we'll do two tables. If we don't have enough people, jump on my table. And if we have even less, then let's play some cards or have somebody to chat with while we wait. Yeah. Um, um, is it worse when no one shows or only one player shows? I, I Again, I'll go back to us. If we have one person show and us, then we're at a two-person table and boom, baby. I'll tell you that story. One time we were running, we were advertising games on Meetup, and a, a guy we've been gaming with for years now, but we'd never met him before. He had never gamed before. He showed up, our buddy Cody, to play. He was one guy, and I was running uh, Savage Kings, and uh, Eddie was Eddie, like I said, it showed up to kind of back me up. Like either if I have a table full, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take off. Or if you need me, I'll join the table. So it was just him and this one player. Well, he let the other guy have like all the magical items and stuff. And oh yeah, he was like, "This is the best game ever." But no, we ran a I ran a game for two guys, and that guy I set the hook. He's been gaming with us ever since. He, he joined magic items. Yeah, well, yeah, he um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but but bad precedent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that probably is what put him down that path. Uh, but anyway. He he played in our uh, in our home campaign, uh, so yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Uh, Lou would like for us to describe in detail how to join the road crew and get your swag. Okay, so used to they had a different system, but just why I tell about it because it's changed. Now there is a place if you're going on Goodman Games where they've got their calendar. You pick a date and you you know, put in a time and there's a block that'll pop up where you can put in all the particulars that's you know, like down below a link. And you put in, you have to give them like, it's got to be a public location. You need to try to advertise it. And they used to ask, well, how are you, how are you promoting it? You might go Facebook, Instagram, whatever. But, you know, like where you're gaming, what time, what day, what you're playing, because they're they have to put it in for you. And once your game has been listed on the calendar, then you're able to go to um, into like the place where you normally would order things from the Goodman site and you'll find the one particular place for swag. And you, if this is your first game, you put in for swag one, second game, swag two, so forth and so on. Oh, and uh, talking with Brendan, you can actually wait and order a bunch of your swag together if you're one of those people that has a lot of them booked out. Once you book the game, once you've done all your put all your information in, you can go ahead and order the swag. You don't have to wait. Yeah. One of the frequently asked questions that he's tired of hearing, I heard. And but since it's we really, are on the road crew advisory board now. Yeah. And, and we both were well, we maybe found road worthy at one time. Kind oh. of big deal. Kind yeah. of. But uh, but no, uh, because we ran a poop ton of games. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, um, you know, because we 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 have the belt buckles to show for it, um, which I always love those belt buckles. But and I, I really love, and that's another thing I always kind of brag on. I, I love you know Joe and Goodman Games in that they give us stuff that we can give away. I love at the end of a game, open that little swag box, and people dig in there and get goodies, and people just love getting free stuff. And it, there's times where in the past we had reached out to other game companies that we were promoting their game, and we're like, hey, can you give us 
something to give away or just letting you know I'm promoting your game. They're like, appreciate you doing it. Have a good day. You know, and you're like, okay, then, you know what I mean? But that's really great of, of Goodman Games to give us stuff to help promote the game, you know? So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Our awesome producer says it's like getting those small toys at the dentist office. And that's yeah. a correct. That's a great analogy. Days. It's like finding the toy in your Cracker Jacks. Right. Or your Cracker Jill. So apparently you found those somewhere out in the world. Who, me? Yeah. Or was that yeah. just some picture? No, no um, I was at a little grocery store, gas station, Burger King, <laughs> tire and hair care combo in the metropolis of Wascom, Texas. And as I walked in the door, I looked up and there they were displayed in all their glory. Cracker Jill. Yeah. Oh, here's a few things that I want to make sure that we have said before we uh, run off the podcast. Free oh, yeah. RPG Day, June 24th. So start putting that on your calendars if you haven't. Free oh. RPG Day. DCC Day is July the 15th. So I don't think that they have announced what it's going to be just yet. And um, let's see, for Free RPG Day, I don't think they've said anything in general about what those contents are going to be what kind of goodies you'll get, but we may have to twist some arms at our friendly local game shop and see if we can get that in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, yeah, and again, that's awesome that uh, not only does Goodman Games provide stuff for free RPG day, but then they even have their own day because they wanted to give away more free stuff. It's like, it, it's, it's we, we, need, we, we need more than one day a year to give away goodies. I mean... They're just they're just crazy generous. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, we are still in talks with the Dark Master himself about doing a broadcast live from his breakfast table. Absolutely. So don't worry about that, folks. That will be happening soon. If it's not episode ten, I would be amazed. Yeah. So there I you see go. It just reach out and let Joe know we need to have the breakfast buffet podcast, uh, Twitch live show thing. Okay. For our You Be the Judge segment, mm -hmm. here it is. What are your thoughts on magic items? Some systems kind of give them out so your PCs can stand and fight in le later levels, but not so much with DCC. How many do you give out and at what levels do you give out standard stuff or do you go for the weird magic items? And that was taken from a question from Doug H. Oh. So magic items, how many, what kind, when? Yeah. And what are your thoughts on that? Okay, for me, and I think you already know this, or maybe you haven't unwrapped that mystery, at the very beginning, probably in the first level adventure, I like to give out something crazy, something mysterious, so that you have something to build on in the campaign. And it like can be crown like, of worms. weapon is so powerful once you unlock it. Mm -hmm. you're going to be hunted for it or there's potential risks with it but there's something cool and awesome with it so i am a fan of it and you do see that in some dcc adventures or it's like and there's a horrible curse this will give you a plus two and make you live eternally but everywhere you go you'll be chased by vampires after it like yeah, you, you, you do a bunch of damage with this awesome sword, but every time you hit somebody, a nun dies somewhere or something. I mean, it's like they they do make a lot of these cool magic items in the lower level adventures, but there's some sort of a gotcha or whammy, you know. Um, but that's where historically I like to give away expendable items in the early levels to help the players, potions, powders, unguents, ointments, whatever. Um um, but but back to talking about that sort of thing uh, in again in sailors, it's in an out of the way spot. Hopefully this isn't a spoiler for anybody. But anyway, you would think nobody would ever find it. But there's a really powerful ring just hidden off in here in a really obscure place. I probably ran sailors a half dozen times. Out of that, half the time someone finds that ring, and it's just dumb luck or whatever. But that ring is so powerful. They, but even he said in the adventure, I think at subnote, like this is an incredibly powerful item for a first level or zero level character. If they flash this around and are real, you know, wild with it, th there's going to be people hunting them down, wanting to kill them for this ring or whatever. So I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, absolutely. 
the uh, Tower of the Black Pearl is kind of the same way where the spoiler alert, the captain has it. So you've got to take it off of somebody that's pretty tough using that magical item against you before you get to get it. And then you find out what the horrible curses are to go along with it. Yeah, yeah. For those well, people that really must have the shiny magic items. Yeah. We never really got to play it but a little bit, but I'd written that one adventure, Green Hell, that took place on the the old abandoned Elven Island and the Elven Ruins and all that. And there was a sword there. And what was cool about it was it was like sticking out of this giant's chest, like pinning the skeleton to a tree. Well, when you pull the, the sword out, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Yep, that's right. The skeleton animates and starts trying to, you know, kill you. Like that sword was at it, you know, pin there, whatever. But anyway, the sword had a cool thing where you could take damage to power it up. So I put built that into it. Like the more, you know, you have to take damage, but when you do, you kind of feeds the sword and it gets more pluses or damage or something. I had a whole dynamic and it was kind of neat. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, we never really got to play that much. Yeah, and uh, Griffin says, do y'all remember heritage magic items? I like to borrow that concept for the magic items I give out. They grow with you in a DCC sort of way. And yeah, actually, it all goes back to our podcast number six, because we talked about that some, about how you get a plus one sword. And then as you level up, you kind of throw it away. And it's like, well, what about, you know, that's been your trademark item and all the lore that maybe built up behind it. And it's like, it'd be cool if you could level that sword up with you. And I was actually thinking the other day of maybe doing something like, uh, I think it's Final Fantasy VII, where you'd have like mana slots on your weapon. So then you could unlock it and kind of customize it as you go. And you're finding basically more powerful gems to put in your sword so that it can become a flame sword or a sharp sword or place plus this or plus that, whatever is more functional instead of finding new weapons you find more upgrades for weapons the game earth dawn used to have something like that where you gain a magic item and so they thought yeah it was crappy that you just throw it away that the item grew with you and it was a neat process you kind of adventure for it or in between adventures you seek out sages and pay them to like tell me more about the lore of the item and as you learned more of its lore and the history and its previous owners it would unlock more and more abilities and stuff so the the weapon grew with you the item or whatever you would unlock new abilities and things which is kind of neat definitely yeah so very good and part of our road crew stuff is i ran some games up at falls con which is more of the everything kind of con it's not a dedicated rpg con but i got to run some of the horde crawl and that was a lot of fun and uh so I guess our funny story for the week can be that is I was running this adventure and in Horde Crawl you play as the monsters so it can get dark. So they busted into this one farmer's cottage and they're like, let's grab the wife and take her back with us. And again, maybe for Lou, this is in Temple of, or not Temple of Emily Evil, but the Village Homelet specifically. So they're running her back to the moat house and the one guy's like, let's tear off her dress. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's like, yeah, we can plant it somewhere in town. And everybody's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. It's funny and when you're having, you having to throw the red card on your own game. <laughs> yeah. And then they went back to town to cause some more trouble. And they're like, let's kidnap this little kid. So they, and again, little kids, right? And he's like, let's take that little kid and hang him in the Druid's Grove. And we're all like, what? And he's like, yeah, we'll hang him up by his toes and just leave him there. And we're like, oh, okay. So it was kind of like every time you're like, this is going to go down into it's the darkest dark. timeline. He'd veer off the other way and it's like, let's throw him to the tickle monster. <laughs> let's torture him with feathers. <laughs> so that was that was the pretty funny story I had. Let's give him a wedgie. Yeah, but don't go atomic. That would be wrong. That would be too evil. Too evil. But uh, in the, is it anything interesting other else happened at that game? Yeah, so that one was almost my first fist fight at a tabletop game in all my hundred years of, of gaming as a player and as a GM, judge, etc. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we were talking after the game and we have one older player, probably around 70 at least Matt's age then you have another guy 
we'll see. I'll get it back the other way. We have another guy that's like maybe 20 like me. <laughs> Take my Geritol shot. But it, it was one of those things like, well, what if we, what if somebody had been bothered by, you know, something in the game and the older guy's like, why well, would just give them a wham wham tissue? And the other guy quickly responds with, that's what's wrong with the world today. And he just sh starts shouting at him. And I thought they were about to go at it across the table. Because that was just, wow. People got hot from, you know, zero to 60 in nothing. Strangers that had never met. Because I'm shy enough that I'd probably be like, whichever side of this I'd be on, I'd be like, yeah, okay. I, you know, I'll let that slide, whatever. I'm never going to see this person again. But yeah, it was almost a fist fight at the table. The old guy is like, my wife's dead. I'm retired. I got nothing to lose. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yes. So I will make a call for compassion, uh, being considerate at the game table. Please think of your fellow players. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And don't fist fight at my games, please. <laughs> Save it for Lou or somebody. Yeah. Lou can handle that. Yeah. He's got the talents. Right, right. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, Lou could kind of, he can duck, bob, weave, you know. He can handle himself. He'd be a good referee. Oh, one thing that I wanted to mention, too, we're kind of getting in this uh, last-minute run to the end here, so it's all these pop-ups. Uh, mm -hmm. DCC has sold like hotcakes since this whole debacle. That is fantastic to see. And I've been told that a lot of other smaller gaming companies have seen similar results. So that is fantastic. Let's keep supporting these. And for me on fifth edition, I'll still run fifth edition. I'll still play fifth edition, but I'm not buying anything fifth edition from WotC. I'll buy it from Goodman or Paysetter or Frog God or anybody else. And in my humble opinion, you're going to usually get better quality because, again, Goodman Games has some of the best writers writing adventures like Carnage the Casino. You just can't beat them. And you're going to get that quality product and you're supporting the little guy. So I'm all for that. Yeah, I was excited to hear that uh, Paysetter Games, our good buddy Bill Barsh, is working on some stuff for uh, DCC. I think that's great, you know. So what do you think the new hotness is going to be? Do you think this 5E, not 5.5, not D&D &D Next will be the new huge thing or what? I don't know. And then there's all these uh, clones, I think, that they're working on various companies like what, Cobalt like Press clone. and some of the other ones, you know. Yeah. OSE seems like it's really big right now. Well, yeah, but you know, having looked at it, it really is just he took the old basic and expert books and better font, better layout, put some cool new artwork and a nice hardbound book. But there's really not, I mean, having looked at it, I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. You know. Yeah. Ghosty Squid says maybe it's the D&D &D Minecraft. Have you yeah. seen that? I might be. Yeah. So, yep, they are doing a little thing with uh, Minecraft as well. <laughs> He's like, I, like, gotta, gotta, can't lie. I want to try D and D Minecraft. There you go. I'm down for some Minecraft, but I can leave the D and D out of it. I think. Yeah, I, I want mine to be really weird. Let's make it uh, DCC Minecraft. You know, I want it to be weird and funky. Yeah, and the DCC movie. There you go. Now that I would go see. Yep. Yeah. I'd be the first one in line. Oh, speaking of that, uh, Ghosty again saying that it's probably better than the VTT. Speaking of that, speaking of the virtual, that was one of the things they were bringing up at the creators sessions today is about, okay, we want to make this inclusive in the other kind of way. We're going to, right now, the like barrier to entry is having a pen, some paper, and go at it. But if we go to the virtual tabletop thing, how high are those requirements going to be? How fancy of a gaming PC do I need? So that'll be an interesting thing. They didn't have an answer as like, these will be the definite specs, but. Well, that was the thing I, I was on the way back from Shreveport. I was uh, listening to somebody's cast or whatever about it, that they kept asking them, 
Well, they first of all, they took him to task about OGL or whatever, but they the Watson kept trying to steer the conversation of Hasbro back to the BTT. But then finally, when they would talk about it and the people there would ask questions, they couldn't or wouldn't answer their questions. So yeah. it's like, well, why are you going to keep steering it back to this if you can't give a it, the whole thing kind of sounded like it was bungled, you know? I don't know. Well, to give us something to talk about on the next podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, just to drop it in real quick, me and you have been playing a lot of TCGs lately. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we've been playing the, talking about alternatives to Hasbro Watsi products, mm -hmm. playing a little bit of Flesh and Blood and mm -hmm. a little bit of the Dragon Ball Super. Mm -hmm. And we have, I have a couple of decks of the One Piece game that's coming out. Oh. So we will see. I even have our producer's favorite. I have some Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I have never, ever played. I know nothing about it, but I do own them because she said that was the number one play. And you gotta, you gotta do it. I gotta take her word for it. I know. But we've been having some fun with the uh, Dragon Ball Super, so if you're a Magic player looking for some alternatives, yeah. there you go. I'm just gonna have to give me some strong readers to read the uh, <laughs> the text, you know. And uh, I guess one of our friendly local game stores is starting to carry the Weiss shorts. Watch your language. So those are pretty cool too. If you haven't seen that, uh, I don't. I know you're not big on the animes, but Attack on Titan I think has a set, and Overlord has a set. And man, I love Overlord. That's I like Attack on Titan. It just needs to wrap up. Mm. But Overlord is really good too. If you haven't seen that one. So is, is this a card game or just collectible cards? It's a card game because I was talking to them about there's a lot of card games that are more for card collectors than players. Hmm. That can be one of those a lot. But they were talking about actually getting it going. Oh, yeah. Uh, one Punch. I yeah, think One Punch. Yeah. I'm going to say Mob. I'm, I'll mess it up. But Mob Psycho 100, the other thing that the One Punch guy does. And Chainsaw Man is supposed to get a card set in that. Wow. Chainsaw Man, highly recommend that to you, too. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen any of that? Have you seen the previews? Have you completely avoided it? I, I I need to check it out. You talked about it a while back on the podcast. I don't mean to check it out. I think you said that character and I have something in common. Chainsaw Breath? Yeah, exactly. But in that one, he can turn into a chainsaw. He's a, a chainsaw powered demon, so his head has the big chainsaw and his arms are the chainsaws. And yeah. maybe that's what you needed when your tree fell down the other day. Yeah, I would have been able to really cut it up really well then, you know. Exactly, exactly. You've got the anime chat going now. So I know. I've been reading Claymore. That uh manga. I've already watched the uh anime. Claymore is really good. So I mm -hmm. recommend that one to you. And you got anything else, Matt, for uh, little anime shows like that? I know you're deep into it. Into well, that. I know back in this is where I'm showing my age probably, but yeah, I loved uh, uh, Cowboy Bebop. I liked uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Um, I like, we talked about it, was, was it Rory Kenshin? You know, I used to watch those. So I've, I've watched some of the, some of that. Um, it's been a minute. Any minute, my uh, Vampire Hunter D book should be coming in from off Kickstarter. Speaking of Kickstarters, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Lotus War, yeah, yeah. There's a whole world of it, and here's a good thing: is like Matt really doesn't watch any of this stuff, so I can steal stuff from Matt with both hands, and he has no idea where I got that idea because mm -hmm. there's just so much that's different from the Eastern and Western culture and different ideas and the cliches that may be done to death in one you haven't seen in the other. So good times. Highly recommend that to you to uh, steal from places, do an homage to it. There it's not go. stealing it. If, if it's done lovingly. Lovingly. Oh, uh, Dandelion games. Have you read your Transformers RPG book yet? I have not. Have not read it at all, but uh, Paul's going to run a game at NTRPG for me, especially. And we almost forgot the NTRPG shout out. NTRPG signups are April the 15th. 
And I almost want to say they're doing something crazy like 9 a.m., but maybe it's more like 7 p.m. Well, it used to be what on tax midnight. day at midnight or whatever. <laughs> Luckily, they changed that. But, uh, yeah, we love those guys, and we can't wait. Excited about that. But of all my other fandoms, yes, I'm also a big Transformers fan. So guess who's – that's that money goes into whose pocket? Hasbro's. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to resist all that, too. I bought – the Transformers RPG book before that, I haven't heard a lot of good things about it. I'm sure there'll be no further support, but I definitely would like to play it. Um, Lou had posted up a version of it that he made, and I talked about at one point I was going to do a war game of it. Because, I mean, you have so many of the little figures that you might as well use them. It's codified army men anyway. So I'm looking forward to playing it, and we'll see. That's one of those ones, though, that I'm like, I don't think I can get Matt to play it. If I said it's Transformers RPG night, Matt, are you ready? You'll be like, mm, no. I think that'll go over about as well as Pokemon cards. Oh, uh, but um, I tell you though, if you were to play some sort of a skirmish scale combat game with them, I'd probably be all over that. We yeah. can cross the Transformers game with Power Rangers and My Little Ponies. Yeah. Yeah, and our producer with the most says, I only collected Pokemon cards for the art. But that is, that is, that's a good example of where it's like, there's collectors, but there's not that many players. Really? Art, you can find people coming into the game, the friendly local game shop and buying Pokemon cards all the time. But if you're like, do you play the game? Nope. This is going in my binder. Wow. And uh, wow. if you've been away from it a while, They've recently came out with the Scarlet and Violet cards, which are just out of reach. But instead of the traditional yellow backgrounds that you won't be able to see, yeah, it doesn't come through. It gets washed out. But they've got yellow borders. Those are gone now, so they're silver, and they look really cool. Hmm. So they're even prettier now. If you were collecting for the look, boom. That's cool. (laughs) Yes, spend that money. Oh, and I'll also say to you that these are some of the cheapest cards that they've had in years. So I want to say the most expensive card in this set right now is like $20, $30. Hmm. So if you actually wanted to, and then I'm I'm speaking specifically to her now, check out the Ralts cards for this. It tells a story in the cards. If you haven't seen that yet, it's the best. So they get the little baby Pokemon as they're a young couple, and then in the next card, when it evolves, they're having they have a kid too. And then on the last card, they're older, and she's kind of like helping them around the house. So, man, fantastic cards. I'm selling stuff tonight. Go buy that DCC starter kit. Go buy some Pokemon cards and don't give any money to Hasbro. None. No money for Hasbro. We'll keep it all. By the way, didn't you do an unboxing video of the new Pokemans? Yeah. So on our little RPG YouTube channel, you've got me doing some video games, which I need to find something cool to put on there again. And then there was one of me doing an unboxing and I'm like, no one, no one in the world will watch this. But one of my friends was like, I'd like to watch you. I'd like to see the cards getting open. So I was like, all right, I'll put it up there for you. Yeah, that thing's going crazy. That's one of our top three videos now, I think. So who knows, but I'll give you all my geeky hobbies together. There you go. Which, speaking of that, you were just at the Ren Festival. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I can play Pokemon in public, but I can't dress up and go. Yeah, that's to- what I love. That, that this guy's like that's, oh, that's too far on my geek button. Yeah, yeah, I love that. But no, um, I have my old SCA gear, so I dusted off my tunic and uh, my belt and pouch and all that stuff and heather she embraced it she ran out to amazon and bought a cool little outfit and so um we went to the ren fair and we had a great time and i said hey we might come back if you want and she's that night she bought two more outfits i'm like how many of these things do you think we're gonna go to but she's like we'll go to as many as we can i went all right you know i mean so but we had a really good time at our local kilgore texas has avalon fair I was thinking it's not that old, but then it occurred to me, I went to the first one when I lived in Wascom. And what's that been? Seven, eight years? So, yeah, they've been doing it for a minute. It's really grown. It's gotten it's gotten better. So I really 
we enjoyed um, uh, Avalon. And then, you know, the TRF down in Houston's really good. Scarborough Fair is just starting in um, Dallas. <laughs> okay. So There's we're not going to be ones for you. But yeah, that's cool. But yeah, we, we had a good time. Yeah, it looked like you guys were having a good time. Absolutely. Turns out uh, Kirby was there. We just didn't we didn't bump into him. But yeah, we're talking about going back probably in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, let's bring it home. Here's uh, we always talk about when we do one of these episodes. We talk about the podcast, and we've referenced it many times. But here's some of the things back oh so many years ago. We're at podcast number eighty right now. Are we yeah. 80 even, do you think? So way back at podcast number six, what we were talking about was Matt's grab bag. One of our most popular uh, episodes. Yeah, yeah, that's always been one of the, the, the clunkers as far as the fans are concerned. Mm -hmm. But that was the first and last time that Matt got to make the list of topics. What are you talking about? Anyway. First and last time. I, it, that's the last time you got to drive the bus well yeah, whatever this is all the time hey what do you want to do the topic what's the topic what what do you want to do as a topic but i still the topics and the, say, big bus well, the problem show. that one was all over the place that was kind of the problem it was all over the place we we had multiple topics you know so to give you to throw you back into the uh way back machine that we were talking about the original long con spring roll coming up Mm -hmm. geek world had just moved oh yeah wow so i mean just to, for us personally i for you dear viewer and listener to this i'm sure you're like this means nothing to me but hopefully you've gone back and listened to some of the podcasts and this will click with you well if you're ever in tyler texas check out geek world they're awesome a good place to get pokemon cards too yeah they've got the best rpg selection around in our local area for sure they really, and, and they have an awesome selection of DCC, MCC. They have America books. They've got a, a really awesome D Goodman Games game collection. Absolutely. And what are we at now? How many years has fifth edition been around? Did, did it come out in what, 15, 16? So for this one, we were celebrating five years of fifth edition. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It's kind of old. Uh, by the way, we were loving it for this one, too. We were like, what's your favorite thing about 5th edition? Why has 5th edition done so well? How the tables have turned. All the turntables. We discussed the many varieties of DCC, which we did a bit here tonight. The Weird Frontiers. Kickstarter had just ended. Uh, we talked about the Cyber Sprawl. Um, what's the uh, Star Crawl? Yeah. What's the ninja? Ninja City? Oh well, oh gosh, I own it. Um, dark, yeah. What is it? Ah, darn it! Yeah, it's the one where they're like the secret underground good guys fighting against the the bad guys, and it's something something city. I can't think of it anyway. But that one's a fun one. It's a good one. And then the 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 closest we came to an actual topic was the plight of the wizard ring any bells to you oh yeah oh, okay go ahead all right weisenheimer uh the the campaigns never last long enough for the wizard to come to power yeah yeah so in your uh 5e experience since then in your dcc experience since then in your savage worlds experience since then what do you think is that still the case do any of those systems do anything else I mean, it, it still comes down to, you know, through the years, most campaigns wouldn't go long enough or last long enough for you to really blossom into that really powerful wizard. And so you'd, you'd always struggle through those early levels over and over. It's like, you know, until people go, I'm not playing a wizard anymore or something. But I will say in, in DCC, when I was running that campaign, the first level, the, the elf and the wizard were giving me stanky looks when I'm like, well, you failed your spell, you can't cast it for the day, or you're gonna have to, you know, you got to spell burn to be able to cast it again. And they whinged and whined. But even by the time they hit third level, they were getting those first level spells off more times than not. 
and with a decent role, they were getting these really great effects and they started to fall in love with the, with the DCC system, maybe not in love, but they liked it a lot better, you know, or they weren't used to failed spells and they weren't entirely enthused with that. But, but even by just third, but I've said that before DCC, the power curve is, is like steeper, you know? Um, but yeah. All right. So let's pull this bus into the station. Yeah. You have any last minute additions you'd like to put on here? Anything you need to say before we wrap this up, put a big bow on it so we can run out and get our Pokemon cards? Nope. I think we've said too much. Too much already. Uh, mm -hmm. Do watch for our next YouTube videos. You might be finding them in new and interesting places too. Hmm. What could that mean? Mm -hmm. uh, do keep bugging Matt about his adventure. Please do. Get that done. Get it knocked out. Uh, if you're going to be at NTRPG or the little Long Con Spring, you got a chance to check out the Horde Crawl Classics and see what I've done to the Village Homlet uh, yet again. And uh, the next part of Carnage the Casino is nowhere, baby. I haven't looked at that much at all because this has been taking up all my time. John's got to get Hell Train out, and then we got to get this out, and then we can start thinking about more things. But that is it. Last chance. I can tell by that clock on the wall, we're all out of hit points. Thanks for joining us, folks. Yeah. <sighs>